Here we are, ladies and gents, Tiger Town podcast. It's about to say Thursday. It's not Thursday yet. I'm getting too excited. Tuesday, the 28th of February, last day of summer, wherever you're listening. Tomorrow is the 1st of March. Thursday, 2nd of March, and that means 2023 NRL, season one. We're back, babe. Well, we're not back. Melbourne yeah. and Parramatta are back. But uh, back. we'll Food's be back. back. It's back. Yeah. It or is. footy that actually means something's back. Good evening, Toby. How are we? I just wanted to uh, correct you on something. It is the last day of summer in Australia, but we could have listeners over in the States, in England. Might not be the last day of summer for them. And if Don't you are there, that's Wania. sick. Yeah. Don't you forget Estonia. Um, Estonia. Vatican City. Russia. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah right out there near the eastern... The Eastern Front, anywhere in that sort of realm, Georgia, Hungary, Bulgaria. Um, I, I don't know my geography anymore. I haven't been to high school in 20 years, so I'm assuming 20 that's years. what that is. 20 years, mate. You're old, aren't you? Gee, goodness, You're older. Yeah, don't forget it. That's right. Don't, don't you bloody forget that. Respect hey, your um, elders, speaking of elders or juniors, you've added, you've added something in the last yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. Yep, what right. have you added? It's certainly not a hairline, son. <laughs> it's not a hairline, unfortunately. That hairline is long gone. No, I added a, another Tiger supporter to the mix, unfortunately. A little girl. Good. So, but yeah, and, that's all right. She's very well aware that if she doesn't support the Tiger, she's sleeping outside. So, it's just so we're aware. Yeah, good. The... Yeah. Yeah, well, first first 48 hours, 72 hours on the planet, you've got to teach her what's what. That's Time's right. ticking. That's right. You know, you know, that's... Um, She's crying a lot, so maybe she's preempting what our season would be like. So this is going to be good fun. Does she know the team song yet? That's the big one. Um, I only know the Balmain song. I don't know the West Tiger song, so she probably uh, doesn't either. Right. Okay. Well, um, maybe that's yeah. something I need to learn. Look, you probably should, considering you're a co-host of a West Tigers podcast. I think uh, knowing that knowing what that song probably were you again? I forget. Pretty fundamental. It depends on depends on the week, depends on the round. <laughs> if we're um respect everyone's opinion round or whatever the hell they're proposing later in the year, who knows what colours we might be. We could be anything. Oh, we could well, pick pick the colours. Well, the only thing that matters now is picking the side and picking the the, the colours that matter at the moment. Because uh they are. One. And the colours that matter for us. Is Are these ones? black, gold, that and one? white, or oh, orange and white? There it is. Trying to point backwards with my hands a bit hard. Yeah, black, black, orange, and white. Oh, something you can kind of see there. Black, white, and orange. There's a little bit of orange and black you can see, but it's quite faded because it is that almost twenty yeah, that looks, years old. That looks uh, sepia, sepia. Like the color scheme looks like it's old, very old. Way, way back, way, way back then when we bought um, hard copy newspapers. That's right. This is a uh, this was a Christmas present. I think I've already mentioned it. Christmas present, uh, the year that we won it. So it's very very funny because it's actually on top of at the top of it. I believe it was a Donald Bradman plaque that you used to be able to get from the reject shop. Beautiful, beautiful. It says the greatest batsman of all time at the top. Okay, and yeah, the, for those watching, yes, it is the size of a postage stamp, and yes, that is the same size as Toby's head. So quite the small yeah. head there. Uh, just gives yeah. you a size for reference. He's he's actually has his head on the wall there, set, resting next to it. So really good uh, scale there. Well, better than having a big head. Well, I don't know. All, all the more brains to fit in, I think, isn't it? Is that the way it works? The bigger the how hollow <clears throat> bigger the head, the bigger the brain. It could be quite hollow. That's, that's true. I've met a few people in the past who um, I can the wind blew through their ears and picked up speed going through it at the other side. Well, that was a interesting digression, even if that's a word. I don't know even know if that's a word, but I know digress is, and I know we definitely digress. Um, well, how, how far into the pod are we? We better uh, start. I think what we're think? about five minutes, and I think we've said one thing about football apart from uh, hey, my hey, we're, all, we're, all, we're all here to learn. We're all learning. We're all we're all, all uh, we're all students. <laughs> Sunday, the we're all teachers. We are all teachers. A few people know that reference. Uh, what's Sunday going to be? The fifth? 
Is that right? Do I have that correct, sir? Think so. One, two, yes, three, four, five. Yes. Sunday the fifth. Round one, West Tigers versus the Gold Coast Titans. 5.15 local time, 6.15. No, that's not right. 5.15. 6.15 local time in Sydney uh, for Probably us. In our, our bias backwards. Yeah, we're living in the past up here by an hour. 5.15 up here with us. The sides have been announced. They have been listed. We're going to rip through them now for anybody who hasn't been able to follow along with that. And here we go. Dane Laurie at fullback. On the wings are David Nofaluma and Charlie Staines, obviously with uh, Ken Mamalo being mm. out with a knee injury. Apparently that's... Starting TBC in centres for round well. one. Sorry, let's go back. Ken Mamalo is TBC as well. So they don't know the severity of it, apparently. Waiting on some scans. Yeah, I wouldn't imagine that he's back anytime soon. No. Because it has been niggling, niggling, hasn't it? It's been something he carried all the way through mm. last year. Yeah, we'll go through and, and have a chat once I finish rattling off, I guess, about um, any selections of note. I don't think there's anything overly surprising there, but we'll have a quick run through in a minute. Uh, we're back to the centres. So Tommy Talia, Brett and Aiden starting in the centres for us. We've clearly got um, the obvious choice in the halves, Adam Dewey and Luke Brooks at six and seven, respectively. Steph, Utoi Kamanu gets the starting prop spot. No real surprises there. Uh, with David Clemmer, and then we've got captain of the club, Episai Coruscant, hooking the scrum there, uh, and obviously cleared from that calf in- injury. So Isaiah Papali'i partners Sean Bloor in the second row. Bloor's been given the nod for the starting spot. Obviously, John Bateman's come in a little bit too late, only arriving in the country last Friday. Uh, is deemed to be a little bit undercooked, and there was a few mentions about some further scans to do with an ankle. Uh, so we'll find a little bit out, sorry, a little bit more about that moving forward, but don't be surprised if over the first one, two, or even three weeks, we see at least a diminished role, if not a couple of weeks to get him um, either over if there is an issue, or from from the follow-up reports that said that they just want to get him acclimatized, so we may well see him and jump in next week. So, to repeat, Papali'i and Bloor in the second row, and the lock, contentious lock position, despite Benji saying clearly last year that he didn't see Joe offerhand is a lock, has been picked in lock. Um, and we'll talk about that in a minute. On the bench, Jake Simpkin is your uh, utility slash hooker. Alex Twole and Fenua Pohl are the front row rotation props. And Asu Kapoa has been given the second row slash dual utility role in the 17 there. Uh, closing out the 22-man squad, Seafarth, Toa, Wakem, Manamua, and Junior Tupo. So we'll go back up to the start there, mate. Uh, Dan Laurie's one in the fullback. That's no surprise. No surprise. Um, yep. you know, we all knew that was going to happen. We think he's, yeah, there was obviously the talk he was going to have the, um, the battle with Stain to that fullback position, but we can both pretty much agree on the fact that he definitely won that battle. So no surprise that he's won that starting spot. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think from an attacking standpoint, at least they see him having a few more strings in his bow, so to speak. Um, and I don't think Staines did himself any harm, as we mentioned in the trials, but I think Dane Lowry being the incumbent, I think he's get, he gets first crack because of that reason. Uh, not for Luma, no surprises with that selection, but obviously we mentioned briefly before that Kenny Mamalo was injured. Um, he hurt his knee early in the second trial. And... Yep. Charlie Staines and Junior Tupo were the two obvious choices to get the nod to play wing in his stead, and it's been given to Charlie Staines. Why do you think they've gone that way? I think just because, look, I think personally, Staines has more experience. I think that's probably why they've given him the nod. Um, In saying that, I don't think Staines did himself any harm um, in either of the trials. I think he definitely put his hand up. He had some very strong carries coming back out of his own half, uh, apart from being run over the top of by a guy that's probably 30 kilos heavier than him. Um, his defense was pretty good at the back. And I guess, look, everyone, like I thought, don't get me wrong, Junior Tupo had an amazing game, or a great game. I wouldn't say amazing, but he had a great game. Um, He was definitely in the right place at the right time with a lot of those tries that he scored. But 
all in all, I think it just comes down to experience. I think the the yeah. experience of Staines definitely, um, well, I believe got him over the line. Yeah, I agree. I don't, I don't believe they're out there trying to take too many chances, especially if they've got an experienced option. And yeah, Charlie, well, Staines showed over the off season for mine and the trials that um, his desperation levels were high, and he was put, willing to put his body on the line several times. And he showed a perfect example off the Bloor um, shift play that his finishing is still second to none. So I don't think they believe they lose a whole lot at the moment, and he's certainly shown that. So, uh, yeah, he deserves deserves that spot from that experience. I think also, too, there, there might be the option. I was thinking about this when I read the team sheet. There might be an option in attack, uh, especially, you know, when – we're not shifting to the right. He might come in as a second fullback, sort of as a decoy, or maybe Dane will be the decoy, and they'll go back out the back to Staines, and then that might create that overlap. You never know. Um, we've seen it happen in the past, not with our team. Somewhat we've, of, been, we've never been that. Somewhat somewhat of that floating role, I guess. Yeah. And you never know. That could be it something is a, else. Yeah, and it is another way to get versatility into the side too. So if we do happen to have... Uh, a half issue or something throughout the game or a fullback issue, then there can be some shuffling done around there between the four of those boys. Yeah. Uh, that being Staines, Laurie, Brooks and, and Dewey to um, ensure they can cover that. So it yeah. does bring a bit of his versatility as well. So yeah. uh, I don't think there's any surprises with Naden, probably one of the first picked and a lock I in centre so. there. Yep. But uh, Tom, Tommy Talao, clearly judging by the trials, was going to be given a first crack. Um, who do you think that he has possibly edged out for a spot in the centers and why do you think he was picked i think it's probably edged out asu um i think he kapoa definitely had some strong games some strong runs uh but i did like seeing him in the second row i thought he added an extra element that footwork laid at the line um he has a really really good leg drive as a lot of modern day centers do really good leg drive um can run a line but insane running the line. Like we haven't actually like our last pod, we showed our us watching the game essentially. Um, so our reactions, our chatting during the game. We haven't actually talked about that game, but that one line that Tommy ran to score that try, that were there was just like his head is in the game. He's like, I'm ready to play and I'm ready to win. And as soon as I saw him run that line, score that try, I knew there was no chance he was never going to get first crack. So, yeah. Yeah. I think they see him um, as someone who's got a fair bit of untapped talent and it's just been put on ice with the injury that he had. So um, I think obviously the fact that Asu Kapoa has trained really well in the off season, again, put his, his best foot forward, as we mentioned previously in the trials. Um, and obviously now as well, based on that second trial, he's shown a bit of versatility. Then I think, that lends itself to allowing um, uh, to allow that first that first pick, knowing that Asu could possibly fill um, further roles as well. But there's obviously still Kapawa who could fill in there. There's prob- there's Tawa who could fill in there as well, and even Junior Tupo would pinch. So I think in terms of again, we keep going back to this word serviceable, but we do have ser- serviceable cover in the centres. Um, I just think those two boys there are going to be given first shot, and best of luck to them. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And, you know, Tommy's a, same as Bloor, Tommy's a feel-good story. Um, Met the kid a couple of times, really, really, like, approachable, friendly kid. And I say kid because he's, like, 15 years younger than me, so I can say kid. Um, But, yeah, like, it's just a feel-good story that you want to see him get back on the paddock and you want to see him reach the potential. Because we've said in the past on previous pods that, we know that Benji's a huge fan of his, so much so that he said that he was going to uh, essentially replace Tedesco when we lost him. So, um, yeah, I'd just I'd really love to see him have a, a genuine crack this season. You know, remain injury free, improve his worth. He's had a couple of games back then, back before he injured himself, where I wasn't thrilled with how he played, but he was in the, on the wing and he was playing in a defensive structure that no one was a fan of. So, you know, hopefully he gets a, a decent crack this time. Yep. All right. 
Um, just bear with us if you are, if we are uh, pausing or jumping a little bit. The internet, I think, is a little bit um, just blowing up slightly tonight. It shouldn't be too bad. It should settle itself over the course of the pod. That's just a, a precursor. I don't think it's actually too bad, but um, yeah, bear with us. So, Dewey and Brooks, there's no surprises really there. I guess uh, I could ask a question though. What would be a, a, a pass mark out of those two blokes just for round one, say? So, obviously, there's a lot of contention coming on these two boys with the, the them being the halves and the fact that we, they, or they, sorry, are going to carry a lot of the weight of their results and obviously by default then did based on last year where we came last. Forward pack has been overhauled and that's supposed to make the halves job much easier, uh, obviously. So again, that question, what is a pass mark on the weekend? And... um what are we looking for each of them? Just really quickly, there's a couple of things they can do to us, uh, to allow us to, not allow us, but, you know, so we're, we're happy with their performance as halves. That's the well, long-winded version. Well, the one thing I wanted to touch on first is the game, the second half against the Raiders trial game, Dewey really stood up, but he was a very dominant half. Now, we know how Brooks goes when there's another dominant half in the team. Brooks tends to go into a shell a little bit. That concerns me a touch, if I'm being honest. Um, but for me, a pass mark would be to see a lot of cohesion between them. If I can see, if I can see that, you know, they're they're definitely, you know, anticipating what each other is doing, and you can see that what they're doing, while it might not come off all the time. You can see what they're trying to achieve, and it's not the block play, it's not the one out, it's not this, not that, not this. It's just, you know, obviously Brooks. We know what his strengths are. We know what Dewey's strengths are. They're very similar in what their strengths are. Their strengths are when they take the line on. But if I can see them, you know, like I said, the cohesion, but then also, I don't know it's probably sounding a little bit uh, cliche, but not overplaying their hand would be a good result as well. I, I obviously, for me, considering the the fact that I don't think the Titans team is very good, if I'm being flat, flat out honest, a pass mark for me is a win because I think on paper our team is better. From those two is that, is just not, not sitting in each other's pockets, knowing what others are doing, knowing that those, the fact that it's now been pretty much three years of them together, even though, you know, Dewey was out injured or Dewey's in the centers or Dewey's a fullback. I reckon they probably got a good season together. Now that should be enough to them to start to understand where each other goes. That there is, like I said, what I would consider a pass mark. Okay. Did that make sense? All right, folks, that's all we've got. That's all we've got time for. Uh, um, enjoy the game on Sunday, and we'll see you next week. Bye. <laughs> oh, I'm glad. Funny. I'm glad you gave me the sh- glad you gave me the shortened version because the well, you gave me the out. long version of the question. Thought I'd go with the long version of the answer. Hey, mate. Hey, we're talking matchbox cars versus bloody monster trucks here. Come on now. I have no uh, idea so, what analogy means to this conversation, but okay. Well, the the question was a matchbox car, and your answer was monster. <laughs> Truck size yeah, comparison. I like to be Come on there. I like to be thorough. Get with the program. Well, what about you? Oh, you're thorough. What is a pass mark? Oh, you're, you're bloody thorough there, champion. I'm what's thorough. a pass mark? Yeah, what's a pass Win. mark for you? Win. Full stop. But from the halves. Yeah, and no, I was just trying to play on that joke still. Um, joke. From the halves, I, I don't want to really notice them. So I would like them to seamlessly fall into whatever structures we have and not particularly notice any mistakes. So I don't need them to be the centre of the attention. I don't need them pulling off 40-20s or throwing incredible cutout passes. I just need them to fall into the systems, uh, allow us to get around the field and not particularly be talking about them in the end of the game. I want to talk about a Naden flick pass or a Dane Laurie support play or Appy Coruscant putting Steph over from short range. Ooh. That's that's your that's your sure thing, isn't it? This week, there you go. It's all right. Oh, maybe. I got it. You put the you words put right into my mouth. Put some money on uh, Steph to anytime try scorer. 
Well, seeing as though we gamble responsibly, um, I don't know. We might have to have a few discussions about that. We do tend to we do tend to get a little bit broke, broker happy, not broke, broker happy <laughs> around, the, around the start of the season because we've had an opportunity or we've had a, a to- period of time, I should say, where uh, we haven't been able to. But we'll see. Uh, let's keep moving for obvious reasons. Steph and Clemmer in the front row, along with Appy. Appy picks himself, so does Clemmer. But Steph, um, obviously, I would say probably the most likely option, and I think we saw that coming a lot. Uh, the There are other options, I guess, or there's other ways that Sheens could have gone. Um, why do you think he chose Steph? And what advantage do you think it has maybe over one or two of the other realistic options? Which would be, yeah, I was about what, to say, what are the other realists? Pol- so, so Polo probably starting, but obviously it's it's lower down in the percentage. But that's a real somewhat of a realistic option, or probably the other one for me would have been uh, Joffa starting in prop, yeah, with with a different lock option. Um, so, why do you think they went with Steph starting? I honestly, I it's not that I don't agree with it, but I honestly don't know. Um, you know, we saw it coming, the fact that he was given the captaincy both trial games. So you don't really give a guy the captaincy unless you don't see them as a starter. Um, but, yeah, it's. I think, to be honest, we both, or you said it in the, um, in the trial game against Canberra, Steph plays better when he's angry. Or maybe actually there was a game before that. Might have actually in the Warriors game. You said Steph plays better when he's angry. And we know that Clemmer is just, he loves to rile his teammates up. Who knows? Maybe they realize they think that they're going to get more bang for their buck out of the gates. They're going to have two guys that are ready to go, ready to run, ready to set the platform. And then you're going to have people with really good footwork to come, uh, like Papole when everyone's a little bit tired and a Kapoa when everyone's a little bit tired. Maybe that's it. Um, but I'm not, I'm not, like I said, I'm not disappointed. I think that mm. Steph showed that he wants to claim that starting jersey for himself. I think Steph, we, like we both, oh, I know I said it. I don't know if you did, but I thought that there's a, there's a possibility. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. Newborn yawn. Um, there's a possibility that Steph might actually be captain in a few years. He's a leader from the front. He's a, uh, Apparently, leader off the field, so maybe it's just it was just inevitable. Um, cool, yeah, all valid points, no doubt. I so you know, Steph has been reminding me of lately in just the way that he plays, really like tremendously. So, is a young Petro Sivanasiva. Do you want to know who I think he's reminding me of? And this might just be the fact that I am a main supporter, is he's reminding me of a block of roach. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I just I mean more I mean more Petro in stature and the way he runs and then even down to how he's softly spoken and a gentleman yeah. and all these sorts of things as a person. You're so. saying Block is not a gentleman. Not as much as Petro. <laughs> Petrol seven cents a litre. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um I think it's also to be honest, got as much to do with the fact that there's no standout lock option and that Joffa is the the most likely choice there as well. So in a way, if we had uh, a lock that was a lock, you know, if we had Madame Mua in eighteen months' time, or somebody similar to that, then there's every likelihood that Joffa could have possibly started in lieu of Steph. Um, and the reason for doing that, I guess, would then be bringing Steph on when Clemmer needs a rest, or bringing Steph on in that second twenty minutes, and he's going to provide tremendous punch. And so there you get a little bit longer. I'm going to assume that it's just about coming out all guns blazing from that front and winning the upfront battle early and uh, basically sticking it to them. Not a, like apart from maybe Tino, they're they're forward packs. Even you can't put David uh, David Fafita as a quality forward at the moment. He just has moments. That's all he has. Yeah, yeah. So Look, it's interesting. Tino, so and you, yeah, it's interesting. You don't really want to go out there ragging opposition forward packs too much because <laughs> they could we, we would get muscled. 
yeah, and that, and then they go and play out of their skin. But you know, proof in some ways in terms of how they hold up came partly at least last week against a very formidable pack, one of the best packs in the comp, particularly the front row mm. in Canberra. Um, obviously Canberra with some dummy half issues at the moment. They lost their starting prop, Gula, at the beginning of the game. Uh, but that's still a, a forward pack that had um, Josh Papali'i, um, Josh, Joseph Tarpany, Elliot, Elliot Whitehead, uh, Corey Harawira and Naira. So, you know, that's still a yeah. good forward pack. So, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, be interesting. Isaiah picks himself, obviously. And then Sean Bloor. So, obviously, with Bateman. Uh, earmarked, I guess, to have that other second row spot, being the the gun marquee somewhat signing. Laws nabbed that spot. He's probably the most, the next most complete second rower, albeit coming back from an injury. Other than the good luck story with Bloor, <clears throat> do you have any concerns about him getting picked in the run on side? Nope, none whatsoever. Okay, no, I think um, my my only like, I guess. Possibly the only concern is he might be underdone from a starting position perspective. I mean, he's had one game in yeah. 18 months, but yeah, and it well, 12, yeah, 12 months or 18 months, I guess. Yeah, he did a pre season, yeah. Um, but apart from that, I've got absolutely no qualms with it. I think what he showed in the in that one trial and what he's shown with his determination, his grit, I mean. They signed him to an extra year when there was no other offers on the table and it wasn't, in, at the end of the day, I don't think, I wouldn't say that rugby league is a charity is a charity in terms of contracts. So there must have been something that's proven to them that he deserves another shot. And I think that's why they've given him basically every chance to prove that. And yeah, I don't, mm. I have no qualms at all. You? No, just what you mentioned. The fact that he hasn't played a game of NRL since twenty late twenty twenty one, so it's been quite a while. And um, yeah, to be the starting position, I thought they would have eased him back on the bench. And I, I think with Bateman coming over in due time, then that probably would have been what happened. But it's, the hand's been forced, and he's probably the next best available option yeah. in order to be able to play that role. So onto the bench, we've got Sipkin, Twal, Miss Joffa, and Asuka Power. I did miss Joffa. I mentioned him before, so I guess that's why I glazed over him. Uh, he's obviously been picked for that lock role. Like I mentioned before, I feel it's just probably he's the best fit at the moment. I think he's probably just keeping the seat warm until we've got a few other options that might open themselves up. If not later this season, then definitely in the years to come. What do you think? Yeah, I think I agree. I agree. Um, it will be interesting to see how they play Joffa. I mean, we all know that Benji's come out and said that he doesn't see him as a ball playing lock. Mm. Has he changed the way he plays or have we adapted to not have a ball playing lock? Or again, is it we saw that Clemmer was being a lot more passing the ball a lot more in the trials? Maybe it's not the fact that it's just the lock that's a ball player now. Maybe it's everyone. So, yeah, I think that's, yeah. I, I was going to mention something like that too. I don't think the onus is simply going to be on him. And he, he's not so much the ball playing lock like they had Hastings playing or even Cam Murray to that degree, I think. I think he's just more of a link man, so it's an even simpler role. And I, to your point, I think that there's a lot more passing happening within the forwards anyway, so it's not as if he's the sole guy. So effectively, he just becomes another middle and another middle that will use his hands from time to time, I think. That's my prediction with how it'll play out anyway. Yep. Hmm. So let's get on to the bench. Jake Simkin probably picks himself. He's the next available, next com most complete hooking option. Uh, and obviously, I guess he could play a role in the pack somewhere if he had to, but he's obviously there to relieve, excuse me, relieve a little bit of time for Appy, yeah? Yep. Yeah, I'd say so. And that's, you know, from that 1 to 17 that we predicted, you know, I think in our first pod of the year, uh, we had him as our utility because he's the best option, and that didn't change. Um, yep. I think he showed his worth in the trials. I think I mentioned uh, when we covered the Warriors game. Um, at times, he was overshadowed a little bit by... wasn't Rua. I can't remember who else was on in that hooking option, but somebody else was. He was overshadowed a little bit, but in that second Will Smith. Game, 
Yeah, that's it. It was Will Smith, wasn't I, it? I didn't think oh, that, it was but a yeah. Camera game. It was the camera yeah, game. Yeah, it was you're the camera a... Okay. Yeah, yeah, you're a fan of uh, Will Smith in that one, I think. But I was um, in the first half. Yeah. In the second half, I think it was all Jakey. Yeah. So maybe that's it. Maybe he's still he's still young. He's what 22, if yeah. that. Um. I, yeah, 22, 23 around there. And Starting he, to get into and when proper he started first grade age. development into first grade, we had COVID, so we barely saw any game time. Yeah. Um. I think he's just starting to find his feet, and I think he's going to come. You know, under the tutelage of Farah and Appy, come off mm. the bench this year, provide that hooking, that um, support hooking role, and who knows, maybe he'll be um, he'll be Appy's successor, and then that young kid coming through, Fleg, will be Jakey's successor. Yeah, it's G ball at the moment, but then maybe Fleg when the Fleg season starts. Talent is silver. That's it, silver. Uh, uh, Alex Twole just doing twelve things. Probably yeah. an obvious one with how, how he's come on in the last six months or back half of last year. And then just Asu Kapawa, who I think, as far as I can tell, is that's really good reward for a good off-season and a good showing in the trial matches, I guess. He brings a bit of versatility, we were mm-hmm. talking about today. And I think that's a string in his bow now. He could he could play um, wing, centre, or just in the pack there somewhere as he's needed. So another good little body to have. And probably going to be rotating into the edges, I'd say, with the fact that he's uh, only really the, the only second rower replacement there available. Yeah, I agree. I think that he'll... Um, I think Pole and Twole will obviously be your fronty replacements and maybe, maybe, um, you know, Asu will jump into Lock or maybe Blaw will jump into Lock to replace Joffa. Mm. Who knows? Because I think... Yep. I'm hoping that, you know, they saw what we saw in the fact that Obviously, Twelve's not a lock. Great, a great. He'll tighten it up like there's no tomorrow. But he just he's very one dimensional. We love Twelve. There's no two ways about that. He's just he's a run of the mill fronty. Um, but at the same time, we don't think Pole is a lock either. We don't think he can create what we need to be created from a lock position. And what he does at the front row in the in the front row is indispensable. We need that, especially off the bench. Mm. So I man, think he has the right. ability to play in the front row. I don't think he did the. I think in the Warriors game, his stint at lock wasn't particularly um, great. He and, and he, he looked, both of them. And he looked better, better in the middle. And and yeah, I think he played one game under Kamali last year in lock, and again, didn't particularly stand out or, or look overly great. But in the Canberra game, he played a little bit in that that role, and I actually thought he looked pretty good. So yeah, I think again. Versatility in many ways is the aim of the game a little bit and inadvertently, I think, uh, on the interchange bench. It might not be the strongest suits of some of these players, but I think that they've shown they can play multiple positions. If there's something we know about Sheens as a coach, he definitely loves that. Yeah, 100%. But, um, yeah, it was a surprise to see Kapoa there as well. You know, (laughs) we were dreading, dreading the fact that he was going to pick somebody that we don't want him to pick. Because he ran out of options. I could, but... I could have just seen Seafarth getting picked. So could I. Yeah, and the fact that he's 18th man worries me a little bit still. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's just, I don't know. I think I think Kapoor is definitely, uh, he's earned that role. He has, in the offseason, you know, especially in the preseason trials, he showed that He's ready to take those hard runs. He's got the speed still, you know, scoring that try against Canberra as a backup. Um, and that was after starting the game at second row. So he still had that energy and that um, endurance to keep going with a, a winger to score that try. But, mm. yeah. Can't give him too much credit. It was early in the second half. But but he started the game, still. He started the game in the second row in yeah. hot, hot weather. Hmm. So I can give him a little bit of credit. Speaking of, speaking of hot, water, hot weather, it's still a bit spicy up here in Brisbane. It's been the last spicy, spicy, day of summer. It's, not that. it's disgusting. Oh, hey. That's an overstatement. It's not that bad. No, it's disgusting. <laughs> I hate heat. Shouldn't move to a pool. Uh, me too. But yeah, I look forward to those May podcasts where we're sitting here in jumpers. Oh, yeah. They're going to be great. Quite comfortably. 
especially considering. Uh, okay, so Gold Coast Titans. Be a West Tobers jumper from uh, for Father's Day. It's gonna be great. Do it. Oh, you can keep saying it. Keep saying it all you want. How about you get your bloody internet sorted so you're not crackling and crackling all over the place there, and then we'll worry about the jersey down the line then, eh? Fair. <laughs> all right, sports bet. Game more responsibly. Has us at $1.78 and the Titans at $2.05. Do you think those odds are fair? Do you reckon they're yeah. on the money? Yep. Us slight favourites? Yeah, I think so. I think they're fair and... Yeah. I, I think we are slight favourites. I and, think we're out and out favourites. Yeah. And so I guess being at the spiritual home ground, maybe tips it in our favour a little bit and there's a bit of optimism around the back end of our trial win that's probably made a little bit of a difference in the betting markets. Yeah, probably. I think... Um, yeah, I don't think the Titans have any big outs either. So it's not like they're injury hampered. Um they seem to be putting a lot of stock into Kieran Four and coming into the halves. And like, didn't Parramatta and Canterbury do and Warriors do the same thing? Yeah, they've all tried it. Hmm. Took him to go and play for uh, DCE uh, w- with Cherry Evans and Turbo and and yeah. um, whatnot for them to miss the eight with him in there. So yeah, uh, but we'll see. We'll see. They people are still laughing about it still having Brooks in our side, so we'll have to wait and see what happens. That's so true. I, it's probably pretty pretty easy to say that you you give us a decent chance. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I um my only pass mark with the game is a win. Uh Leichard, round one, no expectations. Um uh ninety eight percent fit first grade team. Um or maybe ninety five if you take Mamalo in there as well, but pretty, pretty, uh, pretty handy first grade side. Probably the second best hooker, if not the best hooker in the game at the moment now. So look, if we don't win, it is a fail. That's it. Yeah, you're probably looking for a W to start the year. I would say with this squad, it would be. Very flattening touch would saying that. No, and I'm probably walking head first into a told you so moment, but um be very, very flattening to the balloon so early on. It wouldn't be season ending. Obviously it's round one, but it would just it would be very uh yeah, deflating, I should say, to have a loss in round one. So fingers crossed that the boys play well and they can get themselves a win. How do you see the game playing? Um I'll have a look at the weather while we're down there for Sunday quickly. Yeah, actually, that's not a bad idea. Uh, look, I'm going to be optimistic, and I'm going to say we're going to see another Canberra-esque performance, and we're going to beat Titans by 20. Wow, that is optimistic. Yep. Not um, It's not out of the realms of possibility at all, but it's optimistic. It you. is optimistic. It is optimistic. I mean, same op- same optimism that had us uh, signing Mitch Moses three weeks ago. <laughs> uh, so, do I want for to the that then? for the precipitation con- conscious, Sydney, which is just Sydney at large, I'm assuming maybe Sydney Airport, just what ten k's away from Leichhardt Oval, thereabouts, Randwick, parts Randwick, um, twenty nine, clear. No chance of zero uh, percent chance, fifty percent. Sorry, fifty percent chance of zero mils, whatever that means. So, so yeah. basically, it's a clear, clear day. So dry track. Yeah. End of the um, day would have dried very, out all um, day. Good chance of open, uh, free flowing footy. Nice quintessential Sunday afternoon at Lockhart Over. Really. Oh, is there any better place? No, there's not. You know that for a fact. I know that for that, a fact. Um, that was Sunday a rhetorical afternoon. question. I'm going to assume. Sunday afternoon. So twenty points. Over. You've got us by 20 points. Uh, do you see the game close and then uh, it, it uh, opening up towards the back end? Do you see us blowing them off the park? I see us um, I see us going in by maybe 12 at half time, score two quick ones and then hold them out for the rest. Okay. Cool. You don't see Jock Madden knocking the ball on on the end goal after a trialist game after full time? 
Considering he's, I think he's the 21st man for the Broncos, no. Okay. All right, good. I would just hate for that to happen again. I don't know. 2022 is done. Let's not bring up 2022. I do. It makes me, it makes me feel better because at the moment we're on zero and zero, which is, yeah, that's, <laughs> a, good, that's a good percentage. 20? Yeah, whatever the hell it was. Yeah. Four. We only won four games last year. Yeah, there was two boys. Well, they count, I guess. Yeah, that's right. Still two points. I can see it being tight. They're two professional outfits. I think the Titans are actually a little better than what people are giving them credit for. Um, I don't necessarily rate a lot of their players on paper, but I think that Titans being the Titans and being a bit of a cheap new franchise, I think they're very easy to underestimate. And I know I do as a fan. So um, I can see the game going pretty neck and neck for half an hour, if not the whole first half. I could see it being a try each, two tries to one, something like that. Um, and then I could see, yeah, uh, something like a, a 28-16 or a 24-10 or something like that our way. Um, I wouldn't say I'm super confident, but more hopeful and – sorry, more hopeful and more just hopeful that we get off, off to a good start just to keep the positive vibes going. We're going to have losses and probably a decent amount of – but – um, the feel around the place is really positive, as positive as it's been for a long time. So um, a good start. Fingers crossed, touch wood, would be something to hopefully keep the train going. Yeah, 100%. Hmm. All right. So uh, who's your man of the match? And who's your man of the prediction. match? Who's your man of the match? And then your fearless prediction, bold prediction, uh, reckless prediction, whatever adjective you want to apply to it. So man of the Make match. Make a choice, mate. Man of the match for you. Happy. And why? Because he'll yep. put his stamp on the game very, very quickly. Uh, he'll want to uh, prove that he wants to be in Tiger's colours after what was said. What he said. I think he is an ultimate professional. Um, and he just had a slip of the tongue, even though I did bad mouth him for it. Uh, so I think he'll be man of the match. And my bold prediction, and I'm going to do it until he does it, is 12 scoring a try. Did it all last year. Okay. Can you... All this year. No, you, watch, you did so a I get bunch two of other, predictions no, you, then? Can I do two bold predictions? Did a bunch, you, you did a bunch of other things. You can have an A and a B. You only get half points if they come off, right? Okay. Well, my A is obviously okay. 12 getting his meat pie. One A, okay. That's just copy and pasted. That's just like that's yeah. been highlighted. It's yep. pinned. It's pinned. I'm doing this so that 12 knows how much I back him so he can join the podcast in future episodes. Um. Uh, my other fearless prediction is Maiden flick pass to uh, Staines to score. Or is Talao? Hang on, hang on. What didn't I already? Didn't you I already said, give you that? You just said that would. That's what you want to remember. That's you didn't say that was your prediction. You're a joker, mate. You yeah. are a dead set joker. You didn't say that was your prediction. You just said I want to see that. All right. For those thinking as well, by the way, folks, if you're watching on YouTube, I'm actually not this short. Um, this He's chair makes me tall. slouch. He's actually quite I'm, tall. I am. Yeah. I'm a millimeter off six three, six, six foot three. Uh, but yeah, slouching in this chair, uh, that's okay. But by the end of the podcast, I just tend to shrink and shrink and shrink <laughs> and shrink. And this is actually remarkably more comfortable. So. Maybe I should adjust down. I don't know. Figure it out. Uh, my bold prediction is going to be Charlie Staines will get two. I like that one. And who's your man of the match? Yeah. So uh, my man of the match, I was actually going to say Naden. So Naden is going to feed Staines. And I'm going to say that he's going to have uh, a, a try assist and he's going to have a line break um, and or a line break assist as well. So he'll, he'll play really well out in the centers and Staines will be the beneficiary of it. Now, it, that might not be tip the game in our scut, in our um in our favor but that's what i that's my prediction nice hey guess what toby guess what mate footy's back guess what footy's, footy's back. back it's back and how good and we're all like excited season all happy and and your 21st birthday before 9 p.m and your your first kiss with the love of your life all rolled into one it's just lovely it's beautiful it's emotive it's fantastic. And then when we're crying at 7 p.m. this Sunday, um, it'll all be a distant memory. But that's all right. In the meantime, right. living we're the moment. forward to it. How good is it? 2023. 
we're leaving, leaving we're the back. Moment. We are back. We're back. It's Have exciting. Love Ladies it. and gentlemen, YouTube, Tiger Town Podcast. Facebook, Tiger Town Podcast. Not hard to find. Um, uh, what else was I going to say? I can't remember. Standard PSAs. I always talk about the standard PSAs, the other podcasts. Get on them. West Tigers Podcast and Westlife. Get onto those ones. Those guys do things much, much better than what do, we do in all seriousness. Uh, and they are good men as well. So get around that for me. If you are down there, I don't know if you can still get tickets. I dare say this thing sold out by now. Um, uh, it's going to be a heaving house down there. Heaving. There'll be people on the roofs and swinging from the rafters. I can't wait to watch it. Unfortunately, on TV, 6.15 in New South Wales. Kickoff and uh, up in Queensland, it is 5.15 p.m. So we're going to be parked in, Toby, newborn or not. We are ready to go. The popcorn ready will be to ready. Go. Uh, the beers, beers flowing for me, ginger beers for you. We'll be ready to rock and roll. Can't wait. Can't wait. I just parting words of wisdom. I just checked. Uh, they are sold out. Uh, oh, there you go. Can't get tickets. So, if you're in the local, if you're in the local area, pack out the pub. Maybe West Ashfield Club. Throw a few monies through the pokies if you if you feel so inclined to celebrate a win. Always good to uh, support the club, support our club. That's us for the evening. Round one is back this time next week. Excuse me. This time next week, we'll be talking about a, a no doubt. Extremely impressive win, and I personally can't wait for that. So in the meantime, Toby, welcome to season 2023. Let's go round one. Knock the Titans on the head. And here we go. Go the Tigers. Go the Tigers.